Welcome back. Um, my next guest broke a lot of hearts a few weeks ago when he stepped down as manager of Donegal after an incredibly successful four years. Uh, everyone's been dying to find out why he did it, so would you please welcome, fresh off a of plane from a Celtic football match in Ross County in the Highlands of Scotland, Jim McGuinness. <laughs> So Jim, thanks for coming. You had a bit, you had a bit of a journey to get here, didn't you? Because we you did, were yeah. way off up there. Yeah, we're up in the, one of the most northerly points of Scotland today. Yeah. But we got the three points. That's the most important thing. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Good day at the office. Yeah. Then. Very good. Yeah. Very good yeah. today. So, um, will we will maybe talk about Celtic in, in a minute? Uh, we'll maybe the Donegal first. Uh, I suppose most people are wondering why you decided to go at this point. Yeah. Well, I think it was. Uh, in some respects, it was a very difficult decision, and then in other respects, it was a fairly easy decision, to be honest with you, Brenton. Um, when I took the job over, um, well, I played for Donegal for maybe 12 years, and uh, I went for the job, as you know, a few times mm. and didn't get it. And, um, and then when I did get it, I just wanted to give it everything I've got. And, um, and that was the game plan, really. And um, in my own mind, I just thought, you know, four years here, give it everything and have no regrets and um, before the final I had my mind kind of made up anyway one one loser draw um, I suppose it made it a wee bit more difficult when we lost the final but uh, it still wasn't the right reason not to because I just felt okay. the time is right and um, it was a fantastic journey unbelievable experience one of the best of my life and um, enjoyed every single minute of it uh, but it just the timing is right because uh, I just put so much into it, and I just kind of knew in my own mind that that was the way it was going to pan out anyway. Yeah, but you were tempted a little bit when you didn't win the All-Ireland. There was a slight temptation there to yeah, stay well, as in. A, as I suppose at the right. end of every single year, you'd always reflect. You know, when I say four years, I asked for the job for four years, and the reason I asked for the job for four years because I thought it might take that length of time to win the All-Ireland. Yeah. Um, We'd we done it in two, and then we got to the final in our fourth year. Um, you know, an Olympic cycle is four years, and it's four years for a reason. You're hoping that all the development phases can be worked through and you can bring an athlete or a, or a team to a level that they can compete at a very uh, elite level. So that's the reason I went for four years. I had the year with the 21s previous to that, and then with six of them came in with me to the senior setup, so there was a good continuity there. Uh, and I felt that if I could do it, it would be in that time frame. Okay. And that's why I had that in my head. And listen, uh, you broke up with them by text, yeah? Yes. Um, and the reason for that was very simple. Donegal is a massive county. And to bring everybody into a, a hotel okay. and, and let her Kenny to say, I'm leaving, and then let them go back home again, yeah. Yeah. wouldn't make a lot of sense. Plus the fact a lot of our players are in Dublin and all over the country, so you'd be bringing people in to give them. Uh, and that's the way we operate anyway. We do everything by text okay. and group text. and um, But that was a hard one to write, I'd say, was it? It was. It was a, an emotional sort of a moment when you sat down to do that, you know. And um, But, you know, the bottom line for me, Brenton, is uh, purity and, and honesty. And we've had that from day one. And we've had a great, great uh, time together. Five years out of my life. You know, it's a long time yeah. out of your life. Uh, and you're living with these people... You, you know, you're seeing them grow, you're seeing them develop. You know, some of them getting married, a lot of them having children, some of them starting university, going through university, coming out the other side of it. So it's, you know, from my own point of view, I think we had only one child. Whenever I started, we had five at the end of the process. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah, how did that happen? How did we get time for that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so, you become very, very close. I very, can imagine, yeah. Very, yeah. very close. <laughs> And it was such an incredible kind of... Someone likened it to a meteor, like, <laughs> across the sky, like this short, sharp burst of incredible success and everything. Yeah, well, somebody asked me what was the high, you know, what was the best moment, but for me the best moment was the five years. Yeah. You know, yeah. even the times when we could beat, because you've got to look very, very deep inside yourself, and you've got to ask yourself serious questions, and I think in that moment you're really alive, and you've yeah. got to find an answer... Or you've got to look at yourself and you've got to say, am I going to throw in the towel here? Am I going to come back? Am I going to give it a go? And at the back end of 2013, we were 16 points defeated by Mayo. And uh, that was a very difficult situation for us. Um, and it looked like the breakup of the group. And everybody 
refocused, re-energised, recommitted. And, um, you know, we ended up back in Division 1, Ulster champions, and beaten in the All-Ireland final um, narrowly. So it was a good year this year, but we didn't get the end we wanted. What, but, did you, what do you say to guys that you've been through all that when you're so close? What did you say in the text then? I don't think you have to say a lot, to be honest with you, yeah. because we know what we've lived together. You know, the bus journeys, the hotel stays, uh, the celebrations when we won, because there's no boundaries really in our group. You know, there's no hierarchy. You know, the manager makes decisions, but it's very, very... We're all on the level playing field. We're all trying to do our best for Donegal, trying to move the thing forward. Um, so everybody knows, and the text messages kept coming from the players to me, um, and some, some lovely words, and, uh, and that means a lot. But um, we've, we've all been through this uh, together, and, yeah. and we enjoyed that journey together. So it, it's, it was a very, very easy transition, to be honest. In terms of this year, um, there was this Dublin team that everyone thought were invincible. I think they kind of thought themselves they were unbeatable as well. And then you came along and you shocked everyone. And a, a lot of it is back down to that belief and confidence and the, the mind stuff you did with the guys, yeah? Well, it's down to having good players. First and foremost, you know, if you've got average or poor players, it doesn't matter what's going to happen, you're not going to beat Dublin, you know. And they are, it is a brilliant Dublin team. Mm -hmm. There's no doubt about that. It's a brilliant Dublin team. There's, there's many All-Irelands in that team, I would suggest. But um, the reason we won the game is because, you know, we believed we could win the game and we worked very, very hard. For me, um, I think it's very important to try and to knock down all the barriers. And if you were reading what was being said... Uh, you know, or listening to what was being said, there's not a chance you would have won that game. You know, you've got to look at yourself, where you're at, look at the opposition, what they do, how they do it, when they do it, who does it, and see can you come up with a formula to try and... And for me, that has been the most enjoyable thing about, uh, from a management point of view, apart from the experience of being with the players, the most enjoyable thing for me has been um, the experimentation mm. of tactics, game plans, planning and... And, and, uh, and did the system fall down a little bit against Kerry then? Um, and against Kerry, we didn't deliver our normal performance. And if we did deliver our normal performance, I think we might have won the game. Um, Kerry can be better as well, but Kerry were better than us on the day. There's no question about that. Um, and I have no, no regrets about that. You know, I wouldn't change a thing in the lead into the final. Mm -hmm. And that's a funny thing to say. But our preparations were spot on. Um, we went away in a training camp. Uh, our analysis, uh, we, we knew what it was all about. You know, we just didn't go in and deliver that performance. And it was a very unusual thing for us uh, not to go in and deliver that performance. Was that distraction on the day then? Like, guys weren't fully in it? Like, um, It's hard to say. You know, Kerry had their own game plan and their tactics very well nailed as well and they delivered their performance. So you mm -hmm. have to, you know, acknowledge that. But from our own point of view and just from our own point of view, um, we didn't deliver what we, we know we're capable of. We, we have a very clear, very, very clear sort of criteria that we work to for every single game. Uh, and we evaluate that after every game. And I would suggest after the final it would have been very, very low. So we get a percentage out of 100 and um, it, would, it would have been very low for the final. Why that is, it's, it's, it's difficult even still, it's, it's slightly difficult to say. Um, I would suggest that for the Dublin match, we knew we had to deliver a really top-class performance or Dublin would annihilate you, uh -huh. you know? That, they're, they're that good. And, um, and we delivered that performance. Um, we didn't deliver the same level of performance in the final. And maybe... And I don't know, I'm, I'm saying this and I don't know, but maybe we just gravitated towards winning it or, you know, the medal or whatever. I don't know, but um, maybe in time and on reflection, that will all come out. I haven't spoken to a lot of the players in depth in terms of what their thoughts were. I suppose you're kind of moved on as well now. Like, are you, are you full-time with Celtic now? Or? Well, I move on very quickly anyway. I never really look back because right. my philosophy is give it absolutely everything you've got in the moment. Yeah. And if it's good enough, it's good enough. And if it's not good enough, it's not good enough. And I've, yeah. I've, I've said on. many, many times, once you've given everything, there's nothing left to give. And that's kind of been my mantra. So whether we won or we lose or we draw, I never watch a game back other than for analysis purposes. Okay. And I've never seen myself play. 
on a video, right. never. And I just keep looking to the future and try and drive the moment when you're in the moment. So okay, so the future now is, yeah. is Celtic, yeah? And, and what, what's the job you're doing there? Well, when I originally went into Celtic, I suppose initially went into Celtic, uh, it was players that were very close. I remember speaking to you about this the last mm -hmm. time I was on. Players that were very close to getting into the first team. Can we bridge that gap and can we get them over the line and, and, and take them into the first team setup? Um, and from that point of view, we tried to, suppose, put a lot of systems in place to, to, de to develop the players. Um, it's, a very, it's a very fine margin you're talking about when you're trying to get players over the line. But in soccer, a lot of it is about uh, opinions, you know, and, and you've got an opinion, I've got an opinion on a player. So when I went there, based, I suppose, on my own sports science background, psychology background, and my coaching background, I wanted to try and make it more objective. So to try and develop, you know, KPIs or indicators that would give us sort of a reading on players on a consistent basis. And that's kind of been rolled out now the whole way through the academy from the under nines up to the under 20s. Um, but since the new manager's come in, he yeah. wants me to work pretty much exclusively now with the first team. Um, and we, on the kind of psychology side of yeah, things? Or? On yeah, on the psychology side of things, uh, working with players. We're very like-minded in our approach, um, other than the fact that I was very defensive and he's very offensive. Okay. The principles are exactly the same, and that is... He wants high-octane football, he wants energy, he wants work rate, he wants a lot of pressing, he wants a lot of uh, offensive energy going forward, taking the game to the opposition. That's the, the style of play he brought from his previous club, and he wants to implement that. And, and your job, clear, clear their heads, basically, so no, that well, they're completely focused on that. If, if you take that sort of philosophy forward, then there's a lot of demands with it. And when there's a lot of demands with it, then the energy levels sometimes can become okay. a problem. So the key thing for the manager is that the players are happy and that the players have got high energy levels. But when you want to train at 100% every day and you want to work hard every single day and you want high energy on the pitch and you want high energy in drills, then you know it can be demanding. And yeah. that's why my role probably has become more important. If it was a situation where he wasn't demanding that much, then it would be a wee bit more easy for the players. Can I ask you briefly, a lot of people were wondering, uh, you were hanging around the Ryder Cup, there was talk that you were working with R Rory McIlroy, uh, talk that you were working with Paul McGinley, who did an amazing kind of Jim McGuinness-style job on, on, on the captaincy and studied for years for it and everything. What were you doing there? Very little. Yeah. <laughs> uh, very little. Um, no, how that came about was uh, Mick McGinley, Paul's father, is a, a, an ardent Donegal supporter. And uh, when we won Ulster in 2011... Uh, Mick called me up and he said that Paul would like to meet me. Um, so I was thinking, well, OK, he wants to meet me, I want to meet him as well. And uh, Paul had just managed uh, Ireland and, and the British Isles in, in the Seve Trophy and uh, he wanted to get a handle on team dynamics because golf is an individual sport. Mm -hmm. So he just wanted to talk and he had spoken to Martin O'Neill, Alex Ferguson, and Alex Ferguson was at the Ryder Cup and spoke to the team, the Ryder Cup team. Um, but he was interested in what we had done with Donegal and interested in, you know, man management and development of players and building relationships and stuff. Uh, so I went down and I met him. I think it was maybe, I remember the, a match on the TV. It was Christmas time uh, at about 8 o'clock in the evening. I didn't leave to 3 in the morning. And our relationship has really grown very strong. And, um, and so there's a lot of kind of speculation about what I was doing with the Ryder mm -hmm. Cup team. But uh, the reality is... Uh, I probably have lent on Paul more than he has lent on me in terms of my tenure in Donegal because he's been a very good source of counsel for me. If issues came up and with Donegal, there's always issues coming up. Yeah. Um, he's, been, he's always been there for me, as has his, his father Mick. And, and the reality is the two families have become very close, very, very close. So when I was at the Ryder Cup, myself and Yvonne were over uh, and we were over just supporting him and we were supporting the Ryder Cup team. OK, well, listen, Jim, it's always fascinating talking to you. And uh, we'll talk to you again maybe when you are the manager of Celtic. Ladies and gentlemen, Jim McGuinness.